Good morning, world. How are you all? Uh, so I'm just coming on five minutes early for this live where I'm bringing in Glenn McPherson, who is currently a leader at Dell. Uh, many of us know him from Cisco and NetApp and so forth, but I will come back to that shortly. In the meantime, I just really want to share with you uh, and give you a, everybody a chance to get on board, um, but just share with you why I do this. And I, the more I do it, the more passionate I get about it and the more exciting I think it is. I have been working with some incredible leaders and incredible salespeople and incredible people generally for about 20 years now in the recruitment and coaching space. And I have had the pleasure of working with, uh, you know, people to see them come through their careers. I've helped people build amazing teams and I'm really, you know, proud of some of the teams that I have been part of building. Uh, and some of the stories and some of the insights I've gained from a lot of these people over the years and some of the things I've seen you know, in terms of their journeys uh, that they've been on for the last 20 years has just been extraordinary. And I've always wanted to bring this and bring what I see as some great mentoring through uh, people's stories, through people's experience to as many people as I possibly can. And uh, I found LinkedIn Live um, uh, halfway through last year. I was very excited and since then have been bringing these to you almost every week. And uh, so it's very, very um, humbling to be able to, to work with such amazing people and bring them on and, uh, and share their stories with you. Since uh, I started, I've had a lot of pressure to, um, to do more and look at ways we can enhance the, the mentoring and uh, bring more to people who've been watching um, and, and share more insights and more depth. So what I have done is I have built a premium uh, membership, which gives you access to all of these conversations, all of the transcripts, all of the notes that I've put together on the, the conversations. Beyond that, we are going deep. So I am talking to uh, the different leaders that I'm bringing on here, and we are going deep into specific topics and specific uh, experiences to allow you to take away some really tangible uh, steps tips, tactics, techniques uh, to help really build your leadership and help you thrive as a leader. Um, and, you know, I believe leadership needs to be in everyone. I don't think that, you know, you have to have the title leader to be a leader. So, you know, there's resources here for everybody. And so the second thing you get in, in this membership is to join my leadership community. So a lot of the leaders who I'm bringing on here will be part of the community. Uh, I see everybody who's watching as a mentor because you've all had experiences and stories that you can share. Uh, and, uh, and I will be popping in there doing a whole lot of leadership coaching videos and that sort of thing as well. Um, and uh, I... I'm also opening up for roundtables and masterminds. So some of the, the mentors that I have coming on will be running masterminds and uh, sharing their knowledge and um, doing a little bit of teaching for us. Uh, and then we'll also have some roundtable conversations. So we'll be getting together. We'll be having uh, conversations about leadership. We'll be able to um, uh open those up to robust discussions and debate and and learn from one another. So I am pumped. I'm so excited. Uh, and so I will be launching this to organisations as well uh, and hoping to get organisations to put their, their leadership teams or their upcoming leaders on this program as well. So towards the end of today's session, I will be um, sharing a link with you. In fact, I probably have someone able to share that for us in the chat now. So if you hit on that link, you get a month for free. So come check it out. And uh, and then beyond that, you'll get um, the early bird pricing, which I've put in place, which is $49 a month. So there you go. That said, I'm nearly at 11.30. And so what I would love from you today is for you to get involved in the conversation. Firstly, let me know you are there. Um, uh, thank you. It's LinkedIn user. I'm just going to, I can't see, sorry, who is on. I'll just get my live stream working so that I can see who's talking to me. That's not working. Um, it says, I succeeded Glenn on the Telstra account for Genesis. So Glenn will probably know who that person is. Um, and I will know in a moment when I get my feed working. Sorry. And 
in just a second, I'm going to introduce Glenn McPherson. So uh, I'll bring him into the stream and then I shall tell you a little bit about Glenn in case you don't know already. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. I'm just going to do a very short blurb and let people know who you are. So you've got to sit there and, and smile um, uh, while I do that. Um, so Glenn is a seasoned leader. He's got a great leadership reputation. I've done a lot of work with Glenn over, over a long period of time um, and have always been really proud to recruit for him and, and work with him. Um, he's currently running storage sales for Dell in APJ. Um, and has built a, and led high-performing teams for Cisco, NetApp, and App Dynamics. Um, and as we've just uh, heard mention, um, was back with um, Genesis before Cisco. Um, so, uh, sorry, now. <laughs> I've lost my place. Um, so Glenn brings a wealth of experience um, and an interesting personal journey to the conversation. So I'm hoping he's going to share some of his wisdom, but some of his experiences, challenges and, and lessons with us. Um, and, uh, and we'd love you to get involved in the conversation as well. So if you are here and you have questions that come up, please share those questions with us and we will do our best to answer those as we move through the conversation. And uh, that said, welcome again, Glenn, and uh, I'm going to launch in with a, a question, which is, um, how did you find yourself in leadership in the first place? Did you find yourself in leadership or did you search it out? I, I didn't search it out. I, I think I've more found myself in it. And I, I, I would agree with the opening statement. I, I don't think you really need a title to, um, of, of a manager of something to be a leader. In fact, it's, it's often the opposite to that. And so even, you know, I was, I was actually thinking of the Genesis days. I think that might be Paul. I can't see, uh, I can just see LinkedIn yeah. user as well. Um, but, yeah, I, if I go way, way back, um, I, I've, since I left university, um, it was 29 years ago, so I've, I've been in the industry for that long. It's, uh, it's kind of a little bit um, uncomfortable to say that, but it's the <laughs> truth. Um, and, and I think about, you know, what, what I was doing even back when I started. You know, I, I started in a graduate program in, it was telecom back then, changing to Telstra. Um, and I was lucky enough to get into their program where we, we were rotated around um, their business. So I got to see sales and pricing and marketing and, you know, all the different functions. And um, they were doing that to try and find a match um, as well as, um, you know, get, give you sort of that over, that business view. Um, I found myself in the product um, team, product development team, and I, I was really, I, I got into it. I was really passionate about um, what they were doing, and I, I found um, myself just getting more and more into what those products were doing for customers. I'd, I'd almost barge my way into customer meetings. Um, I'd try and find out what they were doing with the product. I'd even put my hand, I'd do silly things like, you know, if, if there were problems, I'd say, hey, can I come in there and understand what the problems are? And, and I'd always think just before I'd go into those meetings, what, what on earth were I, was I agreeing to? You know, because it's obviously a very uncomfortable situation. But, um, you know, the, the lesson out of that is sometimes it, it, it was uncomfortable and a bit of a failure. But other times um, going through that and, and putting yourself through that uncomfortable situation and succeeding at the end, you can you know you can form really close relationships with the customer, get great insights. But with that with that passion, I guess um, I guess other people started to follow, and I was seeking people out to sort of join me um, on the pursuit for what 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 we were doing back then. And so you know when I, I when I really think about all of that, what, what I'm what what I remember most is the teams that I was amongst, the great leaders that I had. Um, and the people. And so, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it wasn't something that I was really seeking. It was just, just you know, what we, we had a purpose in the moment that I was enjoying and um, I think people come around that. Yeah, absolutely. And all of a sudden you were, without even realising it, you were being a leader. Right. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, it, I was. And and it was it was a little bit, when I stopped and started thinking about it, it was a little bit, uncomfortable in fact you know in my, was, my first management job was in Telstra I was 26 years old I was I was leading 30 year olds 40 year olds 50 year olds and I experienced that imposter syndrome very early on 
thinking, oh my goodness, how do I get here? I hope they don't all kind of realise I've got no idea what I'm doing. Um, other than I, I, I do have a genuine passion for the business and, you know, for the customers we're serving and so on. So um, yeah. found my, my way just sort of pushing through it. Yeah, awesome. Um, that's what I love about graduate programs. So it does, it gives you, you, so many people come out of university not knowing what the hell they want to do or come out of school not knowing. And so putting them into an environment where they can try different things um, and giving them, surrounding them with mentors and opportunities, I think is an amazing way of, um, you know, for, for both sides, you know, because it, it, it really creates loyalty and commitment and connection with the, the um, staff members as well. Um, so, yeah, that was a good way to start i'm just the chat box is now starting to to heat up um so i'm just going to say hi to a few people we've got puja hi puja how are you thanks for joining joseph at wertish um from minnesota and watching live welcome um we've got hormuz um uh Val, how do you say that glenn you do you know this person i think you do i do know who is yeah he worked with me at glenn Chelsea, after so. years oh there you go yes. i won't help make you say it. um Bazifta, i think um we've got Cheetan here how are you great to to have you on again um tim hulls here from miami so thank you tim for joining um tim. richard Dooley is here and we've got carla tower um hey, carla. yeah looking forward to to this glenn um and uh <laughs> someone someone who's called linkedin user at the moment says that they were your second favorite at um at app dynamics but we won't make you guess who that was <laughs> oh no that's andrew talbot hi andrew <laughs> <laughs> okay. there you go and ramesh is here from sydney hi ramesh uh, so great to have you all on board thank you for letting us know you are there um my next question to you is is you know, you you kind of found yourself in this situation. You mentioned before that you were sort of bringing people in around you and you were looking for people to sort of come on the journey with you. What about yeah. from a mentor's perspective? Did you have many mentors in the early days? And, again, were you handed those people or did they were they people you sought out or, yeah? There, there, there was a formal, I mean, through that graduate program, there was a, a formal program and I, I think early on, again, I, I, I realised the benefit of that. I also realised um, what, what didn't work. I think when people were asked to do that and it, and it floated along, um, early on I kind of recognised that if, if you want to have a mentor, you've got to have a purpose and the purpose has to be on both sides um, and you need to be really clear with that up front. So um, I, I'm just really lucky to learn that quick, quickly. And so, you know, beyond the graduate program, I, I did always seek out um, mentors and either people within the business, um, but but not my direct line, um, or even you know people outside of the business too. You know, to give you that that um, other perspective. So, you know, I you know I'll, I'll name drop a few people. Probably my favourite person was Stuart Lee. Um, he was he, he ultimately ran the division that um, I, I worked for for a period of time. Um, he, he was a, a formidable leader. Let me put it that way. He, he um, really knew his business. He expected a high standard, but he had a, a bit of a cheeky nature to him as well. That um, you know, so whilst people walked in the room um, uh, feeling a little bit scared, um, I think what they really worry about is that he knew the business more than they did, and so you know, it kind of made them prepare. But he. He had a lot of um, empathy for people in spite of that that sort of initial thought that people had of him um, and therefore over the years and a, a tremendous following. So, you know, I was, yeah. I was really lucky to, yeah, to, to experience his wisdom. Yeah, okay. And yeah. so then moving out of Telstra beyond um, and into some fairly heavy going sort of environments, I know we've talked a bit about, um, you know, the culture at Cisco, some of the... Um, the the sort of experiences you had there um so you're and i know a lot of us you know we come in we've got that energy and that excitement and you're really driven to to achieve and and, and to go forward and and so forth were there any points in your career and i think you have mentioned one to me at cisco it, it, where you kind of pivoted a little bit or where you had any sort of um awakenings or or you know um what's the word i'm looking for um light bulb moments yeah i, I think early on i uh, i was recruited in there by les williamson um and i really again you know i was really privileged to work for les um as a first of all as a you know as my direct manager to start with and then 
He ended up leading the company for a period of time. Just tremendous leader. Could speak volumes about him, but he 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 could see something in me that I couldn't see in myself. And, and I guess you know one of the things that that happened. You know that that point I was um, I was probably in sales for about four or five years. Um, I, I was very passionate about um, serving customers, solving problems, um, performing highly. You know all that kind of stuff. And it was very it was kind of like a a selfish lens that I had. And, and I think that he was, he could see that and he could probably see a little bit more in me. So he, he put me on this program um, where basically part of the program was um, going and meeting with Jim Stein's organization. And in fact, working with, with Jim, he was, he was still with us then. And um, what, what Jim was doing was trying to really break you down um, to, to, to get you to sort of see yourself in the mirror. And I didn't, I didn't realize all of this at the time. But the, the short of it was um, he did a series of exercises with us that sort of culminated with us. There's about 10 people sitting on a stage um, in a circle and, and Jim puts the lights down. This sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Um, and and it, he, he basically asked us to reflect on some, some situations in our life that were, were quite difficult and troubling. Um, and so we, we, we were doing that for, you know, on our own, um, but in this circle, eyes closed, light, lights down. He puts the lights up and asks us to open our eyes and we were sitting around this circle and, and most of us are crying and and it was kind of a very confronting moment. I, I was I, I felt a bit embarrassed and we're all, you know, kind of trying to hide it. And then Jim says, Right, I, I wanna I, I want you to um just explain what you were thinking about. And he turned straight to me and I, I was blubbering away and and feeling very, you know, really awkward. Anyway, I, I was driving home that night and I was upset, um, as in mad. Uh, and and so I rang up Les and said, "What are you putting me on this course for? You know, you made me look like an idiot in front of these people." And Les is a good coach, so he's just sitting there listening to me carry on. And he said, "Why don't you call Jim and express all of that to him and have a chat with him?" And I went, all right, I will. And I, I, I probably had the good sense of leaving it. Um, I called him the next day, and and of course, you know, he, he's a tremendous coach. What what I realised through all of that was what he was really demonstrating to us was you know and he, he highlighted this through it by, by saying you know do, do you think you, you're focusing on yourself there you know do, do you think everybody else was feeling sort of vulnerable and the same and you know how did you feel about everybody else and I said oh, I was listening to their stories and it was was quite moving and he said right so how do you think they thought about yours and, and I kind of went oh right and I think it still took me months if not years to sort of to appreciate what was going on there it was you know Having empathy for others, you know, realizing that it's okay to to sort of show your real self, that you can create great connections if you're real, and yeah. uh, you know, it was it was it was kind of huge. And I think what Les was really showing me was, you know, stop, you know, walking into work being so selfish, focusing on yourself, putting your barriers up, show a little bit more of yourself, and you know, your world may expand. And and uh, you know, within his team, it certainly did. You know, I, I kind of yeah. I, Things just started to happen and move for me there. And again, I wasn't really seeking it out. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, I, I still think of that moment today. It's probably one of the most pivotal moments in my, my career. It's still, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of makes yeah. me a bit emotional now when I think about it. I was going to say, no, I'm getting emotional. And I thank you so much for sharing that with everybody. That's, you know, even just being vulnerable enough to share that now is is incredible and hopefully is a real a value to people as well because um you know at the end of the day what it, no matter how you skin it we're all humans and mm. no matter what our titles are no matter what job we're in and humans respond to humans and so that sort of level of of connection and building trust and all of those things comes from vulnerability and you know not that lots of people want to hear it at times but I think it's a really powerful lesson um and it takes us a lot of us far too long to get to that lesson so hence bringing these conversations so that we can share that kind of knowledge or that kind of experience with people and they can maybe open themselves up to to that a little bit so thank you i'm really grateful for that um i'm just checking the chat box again 
um, uh, because I'm seeing other things. So someone said they worked with Stuart um, in, a con- in the Convergent business, business RIP. So thank you for that um, and acknowledging Stuart again there. And morning, Ian uh, from Singapore. Um, and Pooja, I think that um, is the strongest thing in a mentor, the capability to see in you what you can't see yourself. Yeah, I think that that's and, – and I think, Pooja, you've got to be – and I don't, I'd love your thoughts on this, Glenn. You've got to be open to that. You know, yeah. if you're just going to a mentor and you want them to tell you what to do and you're not going to be open to real feedback, you're kind of wasting your time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think, I mean, I like to use the term, you know, you, you really got to look yourself in the mirror and and, and kind of have a look at, at, at everything very closely and, and, and accept it. You know, the, the funny way of looking at that is sometimes, you know, we look in the mirror and the rocky music's playing pretty loud. We think <laughs> things are great, but <laughs> we've got we to tone it down and, um, and really ha- have a good look and, and take the feedback on. Um, it's it's the best way to sort of grow. I mean, or, or at least try and understand and have an open mind about things. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah having that sort of open mindset um, and mindset overall is is so important. It's a, it's a huge topic. It's a huge thing in everything that we do. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so now you've obviously progressed. You've you ran NetApp in Australia for a, a, a quite a while. Um, you ran up Dynamics here, and now you're in a very big role at Dell. I'd love to know how your experience has translated into you as a le- as leader. You know, what are some of the lessons it taught you in terms of how you lead people? Because mm-hmm. obviously you, you you learnt it for yourself, but how do you now instill that in others? I, I think. Well, first of all, I, I think I'm still learning that, um, I, and I can see that my my style changes depending on the situation. No, I I think that the the biggest challenge and, and probably the most rewarding time that, that I had is when I joined NetApp. Um, you know, Net, NetApp at that time it was nearly ten years ago. Um, what was going through a global challenge? You know, I'd say it was more of an identity sort of not a crisis, but you know, they were trying to find their identity at that point. Um, and you know there was a group of us that really came around um, that challenge from an ANZ perspective, and a you know, big shout out to Steve Manley, um, who, who him myself there was uh, I was sort of thinking of the original group. There was Pat Breen, D- Dino Devanzo. What we all looked at that as a as a really awesome challenge of you know how do we find a, an identity? And we 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 got some help. We got some consultation help. Um, we were looking for our purpose. And we found a really clear purpose by engaging everyone around that that problem. Um, so I guess you know the, the first thing is is you know don't try and do anything alone. Um, always do things together, and as a team, you'll get so much more. And and look for that aligned purpose. You know, I, I, I like to um, to lead in in that style, no matter what, mm. um, because with that purpose, you know, you can get a vision. And when you you paint a really great vision of things, and you have you know you project belief. It instills passion in people. It brings out the gifts that people have. They bring all sorts of interesting aspects to to that challenge. It, it also sort of shakes, you know, some people don't want to be a part of that as well, and that's okay as well. You know, I, I think that's the, the other, other side of this. Um, sometimes we don't want to be on the bus anymore. We, we want to go and pursue something else for our own, own reasons, and that's okay. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think there was... That you know that whole period of time, I, I look at that as a as a really you know proud period of time with so many so many learnings um, and so many experiences. I've met so many different people that I've been able to carry that. I, I, I left that business, and a lot of people were wondering what because you know things were, were going great, and I actually went into APD. Um, you know, I went from an MD position into a first line leader again, and I did that because I wanted to challenge myself into a um, into a new role, and again, you know, all, all for personal reasons. Um, yeah. You've got to do these things for yourself, not not for others. Um, and again, just had a really rich experience in there, um, mm. but, and brought a whole bunch of other dimensions. But when I think about that again, it, it was the purpose, it was the, the team, the, the camaraderie, the trust, the you know, mm. the fun, the the challenges. There was lots of different challenges. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Yeah, and and just bringing people on that journey and and, and having that journey together. Yeah, amazing. 
It sounds, yeah, I I was kind, I wasn't part of the teams, but I was part of the, part of the journey and um, amazing. And it really, it resonates so far beyond the day to day, like it it does and, and the impact and the, the, you know, having spoken and known people who are in that team, it's, you know, it's absolutely true. Um, I'm going to jump into the chat box again, just to divert again. Can you see the the comments coming through or not? I can. Yeah. Okay. So um, I love what Richard Tooley says. He says, um, it reminds me of something I was quoted, what you say whispers and what you do thunders. So that's a a great um, quote, a great way to, to, um, reiterate what you were just saying and um uh, and puja you're right um empathy has been a little lost in some areas i think it's coming back i don't know i think i, I i'm thinking that empathy is becoming um i don't know it, it, it seems there seems to be more empathy in the world since what we've just all gone through together so you know if we can draw a positive out of what's going on now i think empathy's you know potentially one of them um, yeah i would agree with that i mean i, I think yeah the, the big lesson is just taking care of one another through it. It's, it is, you know, we, we've all said it thousands of times, it's extraordinary, but it's, you know, uh, just keeping a check of your own, you know, physical and mental health uh, and of others, you know, as, as best you can, as, as you know, we, we're going through this change, it's, it's so important. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I actually think empathy, though, and I know we've had this discussion before, I, I I think empathy is probably one of the key things that, that is so important no matter what role. And I, I talk about it with respect to when I'm looking for great sales folks. You know, as much as you, you look for a lot of different dimensions, if a salesperson doesn't have empathy, it's going to be difficult for them to relate to their customer or the team that they're building around them to, mm-hmm. to help, you know, create what they're creating. So it's, it's such an important dimension. Um, and it's one of these things that I, I think that, Again, we're going to have an open mind and continue to learn because you know we all we all slip up with this one. We all get a bit selfish, or we all you know emotions come in, and you know you get hot tempered, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things that we it, it, it comes back to feedback, mentoring, just just making sure that you got great people around you to keep you in check, even if it's yeah. your partner. Yeah. You know that happens with me every now yeah. and then. Yeah. Flip over the yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I see, you know, for good and bad, I see my parents as great, have been great mentors in my life as well. So, you know, and which is now our responsibility, which scares me a little bit um, in terms of being the mentors. Um, now, Cheryl has said, Glenn, thank, um, hi, sharing vulnerability and empathy. So grateful. Thank you. Question, do you have a process you go through selecting your next move, sales product and the company? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I, I think it's important to, I, I guess, take a step back and think about what are your career goals and, and look at it from a three-year out and then 90, 90 days um, forward. So that's the first thing and, and try and figure out where you're at. Um, then think about your purpose. So think about all of those things that, that are, you know, are inside of you and, and how you're going against achieving that. Um, against the company that you're working for, the alignment that you have, um, and, you know, then select if, you, if, you, if you're kind of looking out based on those things. But, you know, I, I've, I've always looked for things that, um, you know, where, where you're going to be challenged intellectually, you're going to be, you know, challenged um, from a learning perspective, um, that there's, there's career possibilities, but there's always a purpose in there, you know, whether it's a, whether it's a rebuild, a rebrand, a growth, uh, just just be really clear on on what you're you're looking for. I guess is what I'm saying, mm. um, and choose in that way, and choose really carefully. Like do it do it slowly. I've I've made a few errors in that regard. I'm I'm, I'm not happy to say, but I'm I'm happy to share. Um, yeah, you just choose very very carefully with it. Um, you, you, if you find that you haven't, you know, I think that whole interviewing process. I don't. I have a, my own process when, when we're interviewing to bring people into the team, and I, I think you know candidates should think of it the other way around too. They, you know, it's it's important that it's a two way street there. You know, is this a right match for me? Something you said, thank you for that, and something you said earlier um, in terms of you took a step 
you know, I don't mean for one of a better description, backwards to take on the mm. role of dynamic in terms of role and people thought it was weird. Um, yeah. A lot of people worry about how it's going to be perceived on their resume when they um, when they do that and yeah. consider other people's concerns around it. And I think what you're saying is as long as it's giving you something that's important to you and your career and something that is going to grow and stretch you, it's okay and titles are not everything. Yeah, and it's you've got to be comfortable with that. You've you got to own your decisions and your position. But that that's it. And look, I mean, um, I, I wouldn't wreck it, like I wouldn't just go out and do that. You know, that that took a lot of careful thinking. You know, where, where I was at with my stage in my career was, you know, I was sort of in my late forties then, thinking, wow, I've, I've been in this company for several years. I've been in sales leadership, and I, at, at that point, I just feel like I was going through a routine and I wasn't feeling challenged. I also realised that, you know, that, that's that's a bad position to be in when you're when you're the leader and there are other people that would be, you know, that could come into the role and refresh that and that, that's indeed what's happened. Um, I wanted, you know, where I was at, it was like, wow, you know, what inspired me was when I went through those Genesis days, it was a startup day, it was growth days and I wanted to experience that again. I wanted to experience SaaS. I wanted to, I wanted to go back to some of the things that I felt that um, I, I needed to brush up on as, as a leader and as a sales manager um, and test myself out in this kind of new world um and it look fortunately it worked it, it may not have <laughs> yeah. it was a bit of a risk that i was i was worth taking but you know i was, I was the, the funny thing was and, I, and this sounds like a, like i'm bragging or whatever but it you know when, when i was an md that the phone would not ring with respect to um recruitment people weren't calling me to say hey do you want to you consider this job i went over there and it was ringing off almost the point where it's like this is very distracting um and so that's interesting itself so it was yeah. Um, it, 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 I guess what I'm really saying there is it, it opened up new possibilities for me um, to, to consider as I move forward. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Love it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pooja. Thanks for joining and I will see you around soon. Um, uh, Ramesh, the power of coaching helps us to learn a great deal from the whole experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it does. Um, Mario says, it's very interesting, P uh, Pooja again saying goodbye. And then Dean Kelly has said, Glenn, um, having worked in sales, first line management and senior sales leadership, what advice would you give to a new salesperson um, that you wished you had received when you had started? Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> a couple of things come to mind there. I, I think the first thing comes to mind, I mean, when, when I got into sales uh, or when it was, I was actually um, – asked by John O'Brien from Genesis to come and join sales. And, and I didn't see myself as a sales person, which was, um, and, and what he was trying to show me was, you know, selling's not about, you know, trying to flog a widget. It's about trying to solve a problem. And, um, and he was saying, you know, in your current capacity, that's what you're doing and you're engaging um, the market to, to that. And so I, I, would, I would just um, encourage anyone wanting to get in there is to, to just understand you know what purpose that they're trying to drive. You know, in some in some sales jobs, there there is that velocity and there is that that propensity to, you know, sell the widget, and that's fine. Um, but I'd say in a, in a lot of the the roles that we do in IT, um, particularly you know in in business, it's all about solving problems, understanding value that you're delivering, and then delivering upon your commitment. You know, going past getting the purchase order. It's so it's so important to um, you know get that you know. As Dean taught me, that credit for value that you're, you're selling. Um, so I, I would, I would really get people to lean into that and, and see whether that's truly their passion. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, now we are at eleven fifty nine, which I, I did warn you it flies. It absolutely it flies. Hi, Marcello. Thank you for joining. We've got Marcello's um, just saying hi from Atlanta. Um, I. Uh, I have one more question, unless the, the audience has anything else to add. Richard has said empathy is the element that makes listening authentic and the solace of not feeling you need to speak. Yeah, nice. Richard, you're bringing some real wisdom here today. Thank you. It's awesome. Um, any more questions, comments? I... Um, uh, Marcello said he's, he's heard that sales is a tough racket. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. It's not for the faint-hearted. 
Um, so I would love to ask you one more question, which is very similar to what Dean just asked, and and yeah. that is um, if you could only give one piece of advice ever to a, a, an upcoming leader, what would the the leadership advice be? Just work on self-awareness mm. and, and authenticity through that. I, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I think the one thing that, that I, when I'm thinking about what I'm doing, in fact, I've, I've got books around me at the moment and I listen to podcasts and, and I'm always going back to that reminding myself around that self-awareness and bringing my true self to the table all the time and remember that I'm serving others. Um, and, you know, and the reason why I say that is that you, you can get into these roles and one of two things can happen depending on the scenario. One, one is that, you know, that you, you when things get tough, you know, you, you, you can go to numbers, 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 numbers. And, I've you know, people on here probably say, oh, I've done that and I, I, I probably have and you've got to step back and be, be careful that you you don't over rotate on that stuff. That you remember that you're again, you're here to help people, um, and, and it's a you know, it's a it's a it's a people game. Um, and so you know, you you've got to be very aware of yourself and where you're at. Um, the other side of it is that yeah, with that elevated title, you can get ahead of yourself, and, and you've got to keep your feet on the ground and again surround yourself with people to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I I, I would just say it's that. Keep check of yourself. We're all human. We make mistakes, but do, you know, do your very best to keep check of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's fantastic advice. Um, I would love to invite you to come and do a deep dive session with me, and I would love us to cover. Um, you mentioned mindset. You've mentioned, you know, vulnerability, self awareness. I'd love us to talk a little bit more in depth about those things and and sure. how that's worked for you in your um experience in your career and um it's where we can get a little bit more more specific so that would be amazing uh, and i've got a couple of other topics i'd love to to raise with you as well which i shall do off air and um and we can talk about those too um and um so thank you so much for giving us your time today it's been absolutely awesome and you know i think that we've all taken some really good you know golden yeah. nuggets from this conversation and thank you so much to the audience for sharing so much gold as well i think you know the input's been fabulous um and there's you know go for it marcek and, and marcello having a little um take -up shake <laughs> down there. um so uh great to to have you all here um, so I'm going to farewell you, Glenn. I'm just going to cover off very quickly on, um, uh, you know, how people can get access to those uh, extra conversations as well. So I'll just take you out of the stream again. Thanks again. And I, I appreciate see the opportunity. You, I, I will see you on a deep dive um, very, very soon. Thank you so much, everybody. What a great conversation. And so I just wanted to let you know again, if you want access to the deep dive conversations and then some masterminds with leaders that are coming on here and some round tables, I've put together a very low cost mastermind, uh, uh, membership, I should say, um, that uh, you can get access to. I've uh, opened it up with a 31 day free trial um, for you to come in and have a look around. I'd love you to join me. I'm building the numbers um, and some of the mentors that you've seen on here are already in the group. Um, you'll have access to the community. You'll have access to all of the deep dive conversations I have off the back of these conversations, which will give you more practical tips and tricks and techniques and things to take away. So uh, I would love to um, uh, share. Hopefully the link should be coming into the chat any moment by my magic powers. Um, and uh, if you click on that link, it will give you the 31 days for free. It'll also give you the, the early bird pricing, which is $49 a month for 12 months. So uh, very excited to get it started. Um, the more of you who um, jump in, the more value we will all get from the membership. So uh, I look forward to seeing you all there. And um, oh, once again, I have, uh, I'm not 100% sure who I have on next week, but I think I have uh, Carlan Ferguson, who is a, a amazing leader and coach from the US. She's uh, spent a number of years in leadership at Intel. Um, she's now a, an amazing leadership coach and will be bringing a huge amount of value. So I think it's Carlin next week. If it's not, she's the week after. Um, I should have checked that before I came on. Um, but I hope to see you all here again, 11.30 next Thursday. Thank you again for joining. I appreciate you so much and I will see you very, very soon. Take care.